I think what struck me the most was um, how volatile the situation was and how both our colleagues, people I spoke to, they're really living on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't look further than a day-to-day -day basis. At any given moment, you would have shootings, fighting taking place in certain parts of the of town. Also, uh, the, the week that I was there, you could see how uh, one of our subdelegations had to be evacuated because it was broken into. And of course, my mission there was focusing on healthcare. So I spoke mostly to healthcare workers and the challenges that they're facing in being able to continue doing their work and providing healthcare services to the civilian population, to, to whoever really, really needs it. And what struck me was, one, their determination to continue working, particularly in the hospitals that we're supporting. And they're facing constant security risks, and not only at work, but also getting to work and getting from work. We see a lot of um, a variety of violence affecting hospitals and clinics and personnel. Le matériel qui servait à opérer les malades a été emporté. Et s'il y a vraiment des cas qui nécessitent des opérations lourdes, il va falloir faire recours à certains hôpitaux à Bangui. Et donc la population sera appelée s'il y a des cas gérés à mourir. Even during the week that I was there, there were a couple of incidents. One of them was uh, members of one of the armed groups. They tried to come into the premises of the hospital armed with grenades, Kalashnikovs, and uh, it seemed pretty uh, clear what their intentions were. They, they were looking for, for somebody of an opposing armed group who, that was being treated within, within the hospital facilities. The consequences for the civilian population, particularly women and children, are particularly difficult. Um, a woman needing special support and assistance during, uh, when, while, while giving birth, when she's no longer able to access her local midwife. Health posts and hospitals have been looted for basic medication and painkillers and so having to do surgery sometimes or having to suffer incredible pains without getting any support of medication or kids no longer able to get vaccines because the vaccine team has is no longer operating in their rural area or because the the cold chain for the vaccines is being disrupted. We don't have a fridge anymore. It's been stolen. So it goes gets down to very basic things which we sometimes just take for granted. So what do you do to address that? So on the one hand, we of course have to do more targeted uh, communication efforts and raising awareness with the armed groups. I was surprised to see that one of the armed groups that I spoke to was interested in learning about basic humanitarian principles and to discuss about these, where we hope to engage with the National Red Cross Society that has a, um, a group of volunteers that have a, a theater group to reenact uh, certain situations of where civilians prevent healthcare from actually being delivered. I think it's also very important in reaching out to the civilian population and the armed groups. So um, I think it was just a good example of how ICRC can bring together opposing communities and make sure that they also are enabled to, to get access healthcare through, through our support.